Button in three, <coughs> two, one, and maybe we are live. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bid Nerds. My name is John Polnick. I'm the host of Drafasa Nation and Porsche Road Trip. I'm one of your Bid Nerds, along with my partner. <laughs> Look at this guy, Michael D. He's a, he's a professional auction specialist, and he does uh, happen to be a uh, Porsche Classic expert, as well as many other cars. The guy knows a whole lot about a whole lot of stuff. Um, so I'm going to pull his name down here, pull, do this thing. I'm trying to hit some buttons to so that we're both up there. Look at that. Look at those smiling faces looking at you. Uh, Bid Nerds, thanks for joining, joining us. Uh, what Bid Nerds is, this is the channel. You found us. This is where a couple of would-be experts or wannabe experts or, or self-proclaimed experts talk about our picks of the day for cars and bids and bring a trailer. If you sit around and hang out and watch these auctions all day like we do, um, you watch it like Price is Right for guys, basically. Um, uh, that's what we're all about. We will uh, discuss our picks of the day. We'll analyze the market and we'll give you our predictions as to what we think these cars will actually bid, hammer, sell, not sell for, all of the above. Uh, it's kind of fun. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we get to the cars, we have, a, have to do a really quick wrap up. Um, we kind of keep track of which one of us is better at this. Uh, and uh, as it turns out, we both kind of suck. Uh, but, um, and, and good morning, Michael Deep. Sorry I didn't get to say, get, give you a chance to say hello. Why don't you say hello to the audience? <laughs> good morning, JP. Happy Monday. How you doing? Mm. <clears throat> I saw I your... Uh... I thought I'd have more time to get my uh, sip of <laughs> Yeah, I saw your, uh, your recap from the week. Um, so we missed out on Monday. Uh, we had technical difficulties because I think yeah. you were traveling. Um, but I, I just really quickly, I looked at your math, and I definitely got 10 correct uh, last week. Yes. Um, you gave yourself 10, and the only way I see that you got to 10 is if you count um, the one that uh, Jeff Harley beat both of us at. But technically, of the two bid nerds, you were the closer, so you deserve that one. That yep. puts you at 9. And then I assume you're – you're collecting the draw that we had on the 91 Toyota on Wednesday and you're counting that one because otherwise it should be 10 to nine. I love your new math out there in Vegas. Well, you know, I, so for people who don't know, I am in Las Vegas. I'm in downtown Las Vegas. Like, uh, when I point right over there, I could throw a rock at the Freeman Strat ex uh, street experience. So yeah, maybe I'm into that kind of fuzzy math stuff. Um, Michael Deeb over there on the other side of the screen, uh, you know, he's coming from San Francisco and who knows they, they don't even use math there. That's not even something they're allowed to do. Uh, yeah. Here's why. Uh, I why it's a draw, not because of that one where we tied. Uh, that actually may give the whole week to me. But really, the reason why uh, the reason why we're even dead even is because I got one exactly the right. Which the Scirocco asterisk? Yes, the Scirocco, uh, the Callaway Scirocco that you should have bought. Was it the Scirocco that I got right? Yes, yes, the Volkswagen Scirocco Callaway on Friday. You should have bought that car for I eleven thousand dollars. Of all the cars for me to get exactly right. That could not be more fitting because I have owned like seven Scirocco's when I was a teenager, man. Uh, yeah. That is amazing. I actually didn't even realize that, that that was the yeah. one that I got the asterisk on. Yeah, yeah, so an asterisk gives you an extra win. Um, Good for you. So, so we got, yes, and, and you know, the that one day where we had a – Someone kind of phone in. Uh, we had a we had a, yeah. a viewer prediction, and we, right. we take viewer predictions. We do want you guys to kind of uh, be involved, but uh, when it comes to a competition between you and I, dead even. For yes, the week. yes. All right. Well, I'm going to kick your ass this week. So let's start uh, right away. I believe it because I do believe that you know more than I do about <laughs> oh, mostly cars. crazy. Uh, All right, but I'm better looking. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cars and bids. Uh, let's start with a, a really cool driver car. 2016 BMW M235i Coupe. This car has a six-speed manual, uh, an inline, three-liter inline turbocharged. I think they're actually twin turbocharged motors. Um, one of my favorite colors in Estoril Blue Metallic. This car is offered to us at a River Falls, Wisconsin, wherever that is, somewhere near the Canadian border. Um, the car only has 31,000 miles. Uh, uh, private party, clean uh, Carfax and all that stuff. It doesn't look like it has uh, too many modifications. Um, a few, uh, a strut tower brace and an air filter, a little bit of an exhaust, and then um, some cosmetic stuff. Uh, no known flaws, really, just some wear and tear, which you would expect on a four-year-old 
a uh, 30,000 mile car. This car did have a CPO and the certified pre-owned warranty is good until July of next year. While that doesn't offer you a lot of coverage per se in time, it does offer you the peace of mind to know that you can go to the dealership, have them handle any existing flaws, and then that car would be primed and ready for an extended warranty if you planned on keeping this for a couple of years. So uh, there you go. JP, what do you think of the BMW 235i M? Wow, I mean, that's an amazing car right there with a manual. That's got to be that's a fun car. It's kind of hard to find. Um, yeah, that Astoro blue, man, that Astoro blue was such a popular color in the BMW scene. Uh, no. Oddly enough, in the early aughts. Um, right. It was like they made a bunch of them in the 90s, and they really weren't that big a deal then. But then the early aughts, everyone wanted the Astoro Blue E36 BMW uh, you know, M car. That was yeah. the car to get in the enthusiast scene. So um, really quickly, when BMW painted their M cars, most of the colors were named after famous Formula One racetracks from around the world. And uh, Estoril, oh man, I'm going to go Portugal, I think, is where that's from. I'll have to see if one of our viewers can can – write to us and let us know if i'm yeah. right on that um yeah i boy I, and you know the thing about this car too is that i i feel like with the advent of the you know with with bmw going to an m4 instead of an m3 uh mm-hmm. and the size of that class of car now is really the size of the old e39 5 series so That's right. this this to me seems like the true m3 they should have badged this the m3 this is more Correct. like the original m3 uh, the E30 M3 of the 80s and 90s. and um, But it, what a beautiful car. I will tell you, if you have an E90 BMW, those wheels will not fit on them. Uh, the offset is just, uh, <laughs> 20 millimeters off. We can have that discussion uh, at another time. Um, but uh, so, uh, Michael D., what's your bid on this car? Where is this car out of? Yeah, this car is out of River Falls, Wisconsin, which is way, 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 way up north. And I'm sure it's snowing as we're coming to you live uh, from the west uh, side of the Mississippi. Uh, This car has just over an hour to go. It's sitting at $23,500. But interestingly, JP, this car only has six bids. It's not getting a lot of action. And therefore, I'm not positive that this car is going to do well. Um, I think this car is probably going to peter out around twenty seven thousand dollars okay with how long to go looks like an hour and ten hour and ten minutes yeah by the time if you're watching this live you better if you want this car you better get on it um yeah. your bed was what twenty seven twenty seven thousand yeah yeah i'm i'm gonna go a little under i don't think it i don't even think it hits 25 uh and which i think is an incredible value on something like this i think this car okay. uh Man, this is exactly the type of car that if you're an enthusiast, any enthusiast, it doesn't matter if you're a new enthusiast or someone who's been driving enthusiast cars all his life for, you know, 50 years, 100 years, whatever. This car is going to be a good time for anyone who gets behind the wheel and loves to row through the gear. So, yeah, my bid's 25. Very good. All right. Okay, let's let's jump over to bring a trailer. Um, Here's another cool little driver car, commuter car. Um, This car is sitting on a no reserve auction. It is a 2006 mini Cooper S John Cooper works GP. And the GP was sort of the top of the range. They only made it for one year on this uh, first generation of the mini Cooper. Uh, A supercharged car made over 215 horsepower. They all came in the same color, sort of like, Dolphin Gray that BMW used to use. And it's, um, how do I say this? Uh, they made 2,000 for the world and they're numbered. This car is number 1,922 of 2,000 worldwide. Uh, supercharged inline, in, sorry, supercharged 1.6 liter motor with a six speed manual. They're really cool. I always thought they were neat that they did this with the bigger wheels, stiffer suspension and wings everywhere. The guy who owned this car did the mini world challenge in 2008. So this car has allegedly been all the way around the world and back. Uh, and it's got 30,000 miles offered out of Delavan, Wisconsin. 
What a good time. You know, I think the biggest problem with mini is the community. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 there's something weird about the mini scene, uh, and I appreciate them because they're all enthusiasts. And, you know, mini has the biggest – have you ever been to uh, mini – what's that thing that they do every three years that goes across no. the country? Mini, yeah, no. mini across the states or something like that? Yeah. They'll get yeah. like 3,000 minis, um, and they'll yeah. go from dealership to dealership. The dealership really supports the community. Uh, the enthusiasts love to mod their cars and stuff. But what's interesting about many people is that they only seem to mod their cars with the stuff that you can get at the dealership. It's like <laughs> they get the mini lights. They get the mini, you know if, if there if there's a mini tchotchke that uh, that can be sold, Brand. a mini buyer will freaking buy it. There's this they love the logos. They love the stripes. They want this. They want it to say mini everywhere. They even mini even tried a few years ago uh, to open like retail stores in malls, not to sell the cars, not like Tesla where they say, okay, <laughs> let's put a car in the, te-. they just basically open, oh. ma- open stores in a mall selling mini hoodies and stuff like that. Who the hell that doesn't have a mini would want a mini hoodie. I don't even, I mean, I want, I, I actually want, I would like to own a mini. I would absolutely love to have one in the garage. Right. But I just don't want to be associated with mini people. They're so weird. <laughs> oh my God. I just alienated half of our audience. It's um, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah, this car, yeah. but I will tell you, I have uh, driven a John Cooper works car. Uh, I know a, a good friend of mine. He went from this car to a 2004 Porsche anniversary 911 one that you, oh, yeah. Uh, the yeah, one yeah, you yeah. want, right? Yep, and the he, 996, was, he was struggling going, I don't know, man, you know, and I don't know if his track times are any better than the 911, but uh, great, uh, great car. Great oh, memory. my God. That's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I don't know. Let's see. So this car, um, not a ton of love. So it's at 13,500 on 11 bids, but it does have a few hours to go. Um, I was struggling between 16 and 18,000. So I'm just going to change my bid to $17,000 and leave it there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's odd that this uh, – so this is another car out of Wisconsin. So yeah. uh, this car, you could potentially go to Wisconsin and maybe get it out of there because it is for mm. a drive car, unlike the BMW, mm. which you wouldn't be able to get two feet. Um, although with yeah. the suspension and the, and the summer tires and everything like that, I don't think Oof, you want yeah. to try to get this thing no, out I of there. No, I wouldn't. Um, so you are thro- – you know, the thing is these cars are soft. I remember when my buddy was trading his in on the, the 911. 40 year? Like yeah. Like five years ago ago yeah and i i was just shocked how cheap how inexpensive how little money the dealership wanted to give him for his jcw um i thought that they just brought way more money than that so your bid was what 15 17 thousand oh, dollars 17 okay yeah i'm gonna go under i'm gonna say 15 um, okay i think it just i i just don't think it's gonna catch on i think it's the wrong time of year and i think it's a tough part of the country to get this car out of uh but whoever gets this car if they want to be an enthusiast and they want to be cool in the company <clears throat> scene you could probably go and have tony hawk jump over your car and skateboard that's, a that's exactly right yeah. our buddy our buddy justin jurgens in uh pismo beach um loves the 06 for the meeting he says it's a great year mm-hmm. and the cooper works the uh, gp is a great car so he says they're very reliable so there you yeah. go uh so let's stay on bring a trailer and okay. check out a car jp this this has got to be way outside the lines for you and me. A 1994 Dodge Viper RT10 with 23,000 original miles, bone stock. I love Dodge for making this car, but I never liked it. I thought that the plastic and the interiors were super cheap. I understand that the exhaust is hot. The transmission tunnel that runs through the center of the car gets really hot. Um, these cars do kind of handle. They have beast motors it's an eight liter v10 uh you know you're gonna run it through a six-speed manual transmission um but they're just crude it was just god awful and awesome at the same time this one is one of the early cars it's got low miles no modifications it's all stock and i have noticed that these have started to go up in value and so this is an interesting car sitting with three and a half hours to go out of over delaware $29,000. JPs were 55 grand brand new. So, what do you think? Is it getting near that SRP, this used car out of Delaware? Not a freaking. What's the mileage on this one car? 
uh, 23,000 miles. Yeah, I mean, not a chance. I mean, this, this yeah, Dover, Delaware, uh, George Carlin used to say, the city that means well. Um, this car <laughs> is, uh, a, you know, it's a donut factory. Um, these are one of those things that you said that kind of handles, and yeah, that's true until it doesn't, and it doesn't in right. the biggest way. The, you know, people always talk about 911s being a car that will get out of it, you know, get you in trouble, uh, but there's nothing scarier than driving one of these and crossing the line. Um yeah, but you got to appreciate the fact. I mean, uh, people in the Porsche world, how many, you know, the, the cliche of visceral experience and no nanny controls if you're a if you're right. an air cold guy. This has nothing, no ABS, no nanny controls, nothing. This right. is about as pure a driving experience as you can get. The, so pure that it might just kill you. Um, yeah, but see, I, I would thing, venture. Right? Yeah, I would venture to say, though, it's not the suspension or the handling, it's the torque. And I, yeah. I guarantee it, you know, there's this weird statistic. When Vipers, which of them um, were crashed on the drive home from the dealership. <laughs> and uh, and so I would say most of those people probably did it while they were opening the throttle. Yep. Uh, you know what happens? It's it's not so. it's letting it off. It's they, they juice it. It starts to get a little <laughs> little squirrely. And what do they do? They lift and that's it. You're gone, man. The second because they, you've got to yep. have pressure on those rear wheels that are if, if you're spinning them, you're grabbing the drive. some yeah. amount of traction. But as soon as you let off, now you're just sliding and you're toast. Uh, so like a Mustang, <laughs> you're going to run into a minivan with one of these. Um, another interesting thing about this car for me personally is that I remember back in the early 90s having the conversation with my uncle, um, like, you know, talking to him about 9-11. And he was like, mm-hmm. oh, you can get a Viper for, what, $50,000? Your 911 is $100,000 or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, one, you can get a 964 RSA for sixty, yeah. uh, yep. which was less than all the other 911s. Uh, yeah. And the 911 is going to be worth something uh, years from now. He's like, oh, so the Viper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. So <laughs> what's a 964 worth versus a, 96, a 1994 964 with 23,000 miles in this condition? What would that go for? Yeah. A lot um, more than this. 30% over MSRP, and this car is not going to make it back to MSRP. So there you yeah. go. So no. what's your bid? So I actually, I do think that the Viper community is going to appreciate this car, and I'm confident you're going to bet the under. Uh, but I believe this car breaks forty grand, and I'm going to go $43,000 because I think the Viper guys uh, might look to put one of these away. Not drive it because there's yeah. better Vipers out there, but I think this will get put away. I, you know, I, I do agree with you that there is a Viper community out there, and this does look like a good one, but it doesn't look like it's that good. I mean, it, it, it looks great. Don't get me wrong. The 29, or 23,000 miles, that's not exactly the mm-hmm. delivery mileage. It's, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of these around. Um, personally, I like the next generation one, um, but those are – yeah, it's a whole yeah. other story. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely bidding under um, I, I, 35. Yeah, and I love the '96 coupe when it was blue with the white stripes. Mm, I bought the, the pickup. Great, yeah. I bought the matching pickup truck that went with that. Um, and my cousin Tim Hakeem out in Raleigh, North Carolina, has one of these, and he painted it yellow, and he loves that car. He's had it for probably 25 years. Been on okay, this, get a great car. Put some snow tires on it and drive it home. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's jump back over to cars and bids real quick and look okay. at this 2006 Lotus Elise. Uh, very interesting car. Doug DeMero seems to like it. Uh, 1.8 liter inline four. It's a Toyota drive motor. It does make 190 horsepower, but only 138 pound foot of torque. This car has 67,000 miles, is offered out of Long Beach, California. The most notable modification uh, is a Larini exhaust system. All the rest of the stuff is uh, just mostly uh, cosmetic. Beautiful color. And this is sort of the early pure expression of the Elise out of uh, England. A uh, great driving car, definitely not a daily driver. We looked at one of these when we first started a couple of months ago, JP, and it was a cool car. And I think that car went for a little more than both you and I bid. Mm-hmm. So this car is sitting at $27,000, but only on seven bids out of Southern California. That's interesting. That is, I mean, these are, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a better autocross car there. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those cars that, yeah, not a ton of power. 
Um, but it's just pretty much pure sports car. Uh, you're yeah. going to have a great time in this car, even if you're not going GT3 speeds. This is this harkens back to the idea of you know air uh, our our air cooled enthusiasm uh, translates to a car like this because like an old SC911, it's not super fast. Um, this car is probably a lot faster than a 911 SC. Uh, yeah. It certainly handles better, and you know, and actually has you know cruise control or not cruise control i'm sorry but uh you know analog brakes so i mean this is you're gonna have a good time in this car almost anywhere you go and you can take the top off like a target yes might should have made a 914 like this they or they should and may it might be electric though by the time it gets here but this might be one of the only cars that you could catch a gt3 in the corners (laughs) yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah uh, yeah. zero and I literally mean zero storage space this is not that, that's the one Nothing. thing it's like a car like this would be so much fun to drive down the coast in right uh you right. Know, on the west coast or something or, or take a cruise or whatever but you can't the only storage no. space you have the only storage space is right there and that's barely yeah. big enough to put a power cord for your iPhone you know um, <laughs> there's no trunk there's no front yeah. boot even though the engine's in the middle you would think there'd be space in the front and the back there is not <laughs> but your but your competitor from Porsche, the Cayman and the Boxster, have two small trunks where you can each put a bag, you and your honey. Yeah. And they did, you, and you that, can... uh, did you see that meme that's going around? There's a video on, I want to say, yeah. the PCA uh, uh, Facebook page. Someone <clears throat> got video of some dude stealing a set of uh, <laughs> golf clubs out of someone's car. Uh huh. track the guy, and he puts the golf clubs in his uh, 2000, probably circa 10 boxer <laughs> spider. Oh my and God. He has a boxer spider and he's stealing <laughs> golf clubs and he has room for them. I, that's the takeaway. Um, so there uh, it is. Uh, only in America. You are a golf club set, uh, thief. The Lotus Elise is not the car for you. You're going to want a boxer <laughs> spider. Yeah. So I still haven't driven one, but I think they're cool cars. Um, this one's sitting at $27,000, but interestingly, only seven bids. So it seems like cars and bids is a little quiet today. Um, I don't think it breaks thirty grand. i am going to go 29900 JP. Dang it. That's exactly what I was going to do. Um, yep. That, I mean, what's the miles on this one? 66,000 miles? Yeah, yeah it's I a mean, little, that's, few miles. That's, for one of these, that's a little high. Um, 30,000 is definitely kind of the, where this car should be. If it were much lower, you could see these going up sir. sometimes in the mid thirties. Um, geez, I'm, I'm just going to have to go under you. I think it's, I think ah. it's Monday. I think things are weird right now. Um, this yeah. car w- is in California, so it's, it's in the right place. So you're not going to get a premium for, you're not going to pay that shipping cost. So that's good. Right. So, yeah. Uh, what'd you say? 29, nine. Yeah. Gosh, I'll go 28, nine. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna go thousand under. All right, under. I'm just fair, really fair play. bearish today. All right, next car. All right, so last one, and JP, I assume this is a love letter to me. Uh, you picked a ruby metallic '83 Porsche 911 SC Cabriolet. Uh, this is a Euro spec car, and I am partial to it because I own an '84 Carrera in the exact same color. However. This car has burgundy leather, burgundy carpets, burgundy dash, burgundy steering wheel, and it looks like the inside of a whale's belly from a Disney comic book or whatever from way back (laughs) in the day. It's a little too much ruby, and that's hard for me to say. Uh, This car has 71,000 miles, no real stories. However, it is out of Omaha, Nebraska, and I have it on um, good faith that they do salt their roads there in the winter. So I would certainly say buyer beware you want to have this car inspected before you bid on it it just seems like it could be a soup sandwich if you got it wrong uh cool car european market example so it probably makes a few more horsepower there's no air conditioning on this but did i mention it's a convertible and uh i just love that color so there you go jp what do you think i mean yeah like you said uh, we haven't seen this much burgundy since san diego <laughs> <I did. laughs> um, there... I, you know, this car has 70,000 miles on it, or at least on the odometer, you know, and I can't imagine this is a car that was driven during the winter time in Nebraska. So no. I would not be super concerned about under, about rust. However, there are no, there's, there's hardly any pictures of this car. I don't quite right. get that. Um, so I, I think that's really, really, really going to hurt this car. I don't, Absolutely. I, you know, I don't know what people are saying in the comments just yet, but I mean, there's just, 
you got to have, especially from a place like that, you have to have pictures underneath the car. They don't have to be great pictures. Shove your iPhone underneath there. Um, we're going to come out with a video very soon on um, Bid Nerds where we're going to give you our top five tips on how to how to photograph your car so that you get the most money uh, when you place your car on Cars and Bids and bring a trailer. So look for that video coming soon. Uh, this car, The seller of this car could definitely benefit from that video that we're oh, coming. Is absolutely. this a private seller or is this a dealer? Uh, I believe it's a private yeah. sale. Uh, actually, you know what? No, nope. this is yeah, a dealer. It's a dealer. It is a dealer. You know, Even worse. So, I mean, he's got a lift. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I can, see, I can see an individual kind of blowing it on this regard, but a dealer, there's no excuse, man. This That seems really, really weird that there's nothing underneath it. Um, yeah. With only, like, with only like 20 photos or something, four of the photos are the pictures in the line in the dealer's, like, hall like it's yeah. crazy it's just yeah. lineup photos i mean this is really terribly marketed this is yeah. a poor job and the uh, price is going to reflect it five and a half hours ago nine bids uh this car twenty three thousand five hundred. Uh, uh, uh omaha, omaha nebraska, nebraska. We've only said yeah that yeah. Um, yeah okay so what's your bid i so uh, that was the thing i actually struggled with this car more than all the others because I think better photos and a better time of year, this car would easily break 30 grand uh, because of the color yeah. and the miles are fair, but I'm not, I don't, I don't think so, man. I'm, I'm struggling to say this car is going to bring 28,000 bucks. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it does seem like it has some, uh, some receipts for some recent work, like a clutch and, you know, bearings and stuff like that. So that's, that's good news for it. But yeah, I, I think this is a no sale at 27. No sale at 27. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, you know, it, but you should buy it, though, and just park it next to Ruby. That would be... Absolutely. So... Chester would look so goddamn cool in this car. Okay, so, so I have... cooler than you. I, I would, except there is an 84 with a 3.2 mm. Burgundy Targa in my mm. region on a certain website that everybody goes to for things. Mm. And um, I... Man, I'm telling you, I got to show it to you offline. It's a really cool car. Maybe yeah, we should I'm buy it. Yeah, yeah. All right, Twinsies. Well, that's all the cars today, right? Good. Yeah, we're done. Thank God. Hey, hey, guys. Well, we tomorrow. have uh, just sat through another edition of Bid Nerds. This is our Monday edition. Uh, we are very happy that you've hung out with us. Uh, please subscribe. Please like. Please share. Spread the word. We are a brand new channel. We're just starting out, and we're really having a good time with you guys. Send us uh, your suggestions on what cars you'd like us to review. We have a list of cars that are our picks, but we'd way rather hear about your picks. So uh, yeah. you have watched another edition of Bid Nerds. My name is John Polnick, live from downtown Las Vegas. Michael Deeb, live from yep. San Francisco. You want to say goodbye to the fans? Absolutely. Subscribe, share, and suggest. Bye, people. All right, guys. We will see you tomorrow. That's Tuesday at around 9 o'clock. Bid nerds. Yay.